Okay, perfect, lads. So we started off in the video just can you, so you can put a face to the name for anyone who hasn't met me before. Um, nice to meet you. Is that? Yeah, perfect. I can share now. All right. So obviously the chat function is there. If you have any questions, maybe just write them down on the notepad and then, and then you can stick them in um, into the chat at the end. Okay, so everyone. Everyone can see that now, perfect. All right, so. We're just gonna give a brief introduction to nutrition and then performance nutrition, um, lads. So do. We will follow up on this um, throughout the summer and, and the school year. This is a brief background, I suppose, just to raise awareness. Um, now a lot of you are, are, are probably good with it already, but there's probably a lot of information out there that's, that, evades, that evades us. So this is just to make sure that we all get quality evidence-based um, information. For the guys that don't know me, I think I've met most of you now between this and, and uh, Zoom sessions, obviously, as Val said, my name is Connor. Um, ju just um, finished up Sport Science and Health in DCU this year. Um, I've worked with Leinster, Dublin under 16s, obviously, Belvo um, seniors for the last two years as the head strength condition coach, and I think it's gone four years now overall. Um, left the school myself back in 2016, and then I've done some. Some cool work with adapted physical activity out in uh, Stewart's Hospital as well, which are basically people who may not be as fort fortunate as yourselves with disabilities, but they absolutely love the exercise and, and physical activity as well. So that's just a bit about me. Um, and obviously, those of you who have worked with me, you, you know what's important to me and what I expect from you. So just to give the guys who may not know me a brief background on myself, the values some of which I learned in the school and, and some of which I kind of come up with myself. So basically what's important to me and what I try and live my life and, and work by honesty, humility, strength, at selflessness, men for others, enjoyment, because you got to enjoy the journey and, and this is no better time to do that. Sit back, embrace it and smell the roses, lads, because it's life is there to be enjoyed. And then obviously healthy lifestyle kind of exposes the umbrella um, for all of that. My philosophy, education and inclusion through, through physical activity. So obviously, I'm sure most of you know by now, my passion is the strength and conditioning side of things, the physical activity, nutrition. But within that, it's the education side of things as well, like working with you guys, using the physical activity and nutrition to teach yourselves values and discipline and hopefully um, you may take some of them with you for the rest of your young lives all ahead of you. So why is it important? We have to provide the body with sufficient energy to perform the activities of daily living. What is an activity of daily living? Like That can be walking to the shops, walking up the stairs, filling the dishwasher, which I hope you're all doing, cutting the grass, whatever it may be. Maintain a strong immune system. And then obviously, one you're all probably most interested in is young, fit and healthy men and um, optimize their preparation for and recovery from exercise and competition. Okay, for to look at the food pyramid. So these are the guidelines set out by the HSE. Find it on the HSE website if you're interested in going into it in a bit more depth. But basically the base is our, our big rocks as we call them what's really important in the diet as we get closer to the top they're the things you kind of want to have less of in your diet i'm not saying don't eat any sweet treats or um cans of coke or fanta or whatever it is but if as a general rule of thumb stick to that 80 20 rule we have 80 percent whole foods and then 20 percent we can allow ourselves that little treat a few of you might be asking what is a whole food? Basically, unprocessed, unrefined, or a food that that is not processed to the same extent as some of the other stuff that's on that that food pyramid. So, obviously, your fruit and veg, your spuds, meat, um, sausages and stuff is a different story. Obviously, that's bordering on on the really refined and processed stuff. 
So you're talking about your whole sources of meat, chicken fillets, steak, eggs, whatever it is, okay? For all you guys, this is what I want to draw your attention um, towards. That HSE um, food pyramid is it, for the general population. And it, obviously it's quality information. It's really good, but it doesn't really allude to what is important for young athletes like yourselves. Okay, so starting from the bottom, what's most important is that we're getting that um, energy in so that we're, we are getting enough food in to support the activities that we're taking part in. Macronutrients, then we're going to go into more detail on that. So are we getting enough carbohydrate, protein, and fat? Our micronutrients, obviously we need loads of them, which we'll touch on, vitamins and minerals, getting from our fruit and veg. And then as we get to the top, once we have them big rocks in place, stuff that obviously is really important, but not as important as our big rocks, is stuff like the timing of your meals around training and throughout the day. All right, so starting off at the bottom of our pyramid, calories. Obviously, with water being the exception, all food and drink provide the body with energy in the form of calories. Some of you might have seen the KCAL on, on the back of food labels and that. That's basically just an abbreviation for calories. Okay. Energy balance. So, next slide perfect yeah resting metabolic rate or a basal metabolic rate don't worry about the term really but it, it, it is important that you know what this is lads okay so even when we are just sitting down as i said your body is is burning and um, it is burning calories so your basic basal metabolic rate the energy that we need to support the functions of the body at rest so when we're not doing anything believe it or not you're still gonna you're still going to need um, to, to fuel that body with calories. Don't worry too much about taking stuff down because we will get this out to you. But these are just simple equations for calculating your, your basic metabolic rate. So for me, obviously, if I was to stick in my details in terms of weight and height there, the figure I would get would be the amount of calories that I should be eating on a day where maybe I'm, I'm, I'm doing limited physical activity, basically. Um, maybe not too dissimilar to some of the days during lockdown where you could just be lounging around the house. And obviously that's okay, but you just need to take into account um, that your calories obviously are going to be far different to what they will be on a day that, that you will be training. So that brings us on to our next slide, which is we want to balance this scale, okay, on the days. Um, and I know there was one question, how much um, extra calories do I need to be eating? Uh, if, I, if I'm looking to put on some lean mass, so we'll say roughly we want to fall in the window of three to 500 surplus. Obviously, that's going to tip the scales. We're taking in, in more calories than, than we're burning because we want to put on a bit of size. So we want to tip that scale um, so that our intake is a little bit um, greater than our expenditure. Obviously, on days where we're not doing anything, try, try and keep that scales balanced, okay? Moving on to the next level of our hierarchy would be the macronutrients, our carbs, proteins, and fats. So our carbohydrates, proteins, and fats, as we just said. Yeah, we need them in large amounts. It's in the name, macro, large amounts. Okay, so um, it's probably a bit of a simple analogy for you, but it is a good one. Um, I used it in the juniors there in their presentation. If we think of ourselves as a car going to the petrol station, sticking in the fuel, that's, that's what our carbs are basically. They're the primary fuel source for the body. So one gram of carbohydrate is the equivalent of four calories. Good sources of whole carbohydrates, obviously your oats, rice, spuds, pastas, honey, fruits, um, and stuff like that. All right. Obviously, you've got carbohydrates from other stuff like ice cream and if you go to the sweet shop i'm sure you can find loads but stick to that 80 20 rule okay what happens when we eat them we're either going to use them as fuel or they'll be stored in the body for use at a later date or whenever we need them okay our body is is good like that that it, it'll it'll keep them in reserve 
for when we do need them. Okay. It's an amazing um if if a few of you are thinking of what to do when you when you pass on from the school, hopefully my passion instills a bit in you and you realise how interesting all this stuff is. Failing that, I'll provide you with all the information you need. So basically we eat carbohydrates, fuel, or we store them for fuel at a later date. All right. The recommendations, approximately about 50% of our daily energy intake for carbohydrates. All right, moving on to protein, which is I'm sure the word that most of you um, were thinking of when you heard about the nutrition presentation. So not only is it a building block of muscle, lads, but it supports growth and repair throughout the whole body. Same as carbs, one gram of protein is the equivalent of four calories. Examples, obviously you've got your meat, fish, dairy, eggs, um, plant proteins, chickpeas, tofu, lentils, all the bean varieties, all really good sources of protein. Again, what's recommended? That's another abbreviation that I suppose is big in the nutrition world is RDA, like so in case any of were wondering what the hell that stands for, recommended daily allowance. Same with the um, pyramid. That's a recommended daily allowance for the average population, okay? So it doesn't take into account the likes of us who are training sometimes twice a day, um, young, growing athletes, okay? We want to be aiming for about within that 1.4 to 2.2 grams per kilo of your body weight of protein intake per day. Obviously, it's going to be different to the average population. Fats, okay? Don't be afraid of fats. So important for healthy functioning of the heart, brain, immune system, and hormone production, which are vital, all, all vital for performance, and that's fairly self-explanatory. They are more um, dense in calories in, sorry, than um, carbohydrates and protein, so one gram being equal to nine calories. But again, they're essential to have in your diet. All right, we've got vegetable oil, sources of fish, which is obviously going to be a source of protein as well, and nuts, nut butter, and again, think whole foods. There's loads of nut butters out there that are um, really refined, and, and honestly, if you turned around and looked at the label, you wouldn't believe um, the amount of shit, apologies, that you will be putting into your body. So if you can, try, try and get natural um, brands of the nut butter. Meridian, they do all natural nut butters, like you've got peanut, cashew, and and um, what it, whatever tickles your fancy. Okay, might have heard of these as well. Again, getting slightly technical, but um, as I was saying to Val, the conversation I had with him before this, I think it is really important that you guys are aware of all this. Obviously, if you have any questions that are in further detail, I'm your man to ask, but it is important that you guys are aware of this. Essential fatty acids. So it's a fairly obvious why they're essential because we can't make them within the body. So if we can't make them within the body, then we're gonna to need to get them from our diet. Omega-3s, so important for the function of our heart and brain. In particular, you lads with exams at the minute, obviously you should be eating um, healthy fats year round, but particularly during exam time, really trying to get good sources of omega-3. So at, at least one to two, even three servings of salmon or an oily fish like mackerel or something one, two, three times a week. Really important that we're trying to um, tick that box in our diet. So what are the requirements? Approximately 25. Um, and again, 20 rule fats. All right, so um, plant, plant fats, oils, fish, and, and trying like chocolate bars and that they're, all, they're, they're full of it, lads, but it, again, it's really refined and processed. So if you can, try and stay away from that. Obviously, I am completely an advocate for satisfying the sweet tooth, but remember that 80 20 rule. Okay, then we're moving on to the micronutrients. So, macro, large amounts, micro, we've got small amounts. What are they? Vitamins and minerals. So, you, you all could list off. I'm not going to take on a science class here what they are, like your vitamin C, vitamin D, vitamin B, whatever it is, they're all there, lads. We only need them in small amounts 
balance, but I can't emphasize enough how important they are to, to our physiological function, which is basically just the functioning um, of the processes within our body. Okay, so important. And basically, if you, you get a variety of fruit and veg in the diet, you're gonna, you're gonna tick the box with, um, with micronutrients. For me, I try just to get a little bit in with every meal, um, and that every meal, every snack, that's that's how I know I'm kind of I'm actively um, aiming to take off them that micronutrient intake. As we move up that pyramid, it becomes a little bit less of importance, but they're they're really vital. But I suppose why it is a pyramid is because if we don't have the base in place, there's no point worrying about the top. So make sure that you have the base in place before you start getting involved in the intricacies. So timing obviously is really important, particularly for you guys. We're starting to get to, a, I suppose, a more um, elite level of training and, and your training age is becoming that little bit older. Most of you are probably coming on three years now of training um, seriously enough. So we can start looking towards the top of this pyramid. Again, we just want to we want to make sure that we, I suppose, we're getting up in time to fit all them meals in. All right, so three to four meals and then you've got say two to three snacks within there. If you're, if you're a late riser, I suggest try and get up an hour or two earlier to make sure that, that you're not missing out on any meals because you guys basically, to put it simply, you need the food, you need the calories, so, so you've got to make sure that, that you're making a conscious effort to get it in. All right. This is just going to provide you with some examples. Um, and then as we progress through the presentation, We'll give you some some resources that you can use to, I suppose, broaden the spectrum of, of the of the options that you have for breakfast, lunch, dinner, snacks, pre and post training. Okay, so what what might a breakfast look like? Oats, obviously, brilliant um, source of carbohydrates, whole food. You've got your nut butter, it's giving you a healthy source of fats, honey, and our micronutrients giving us sugars and we're also taking that micronutrient box. The eggs are getting a really healthy fat in, good source of protein. Obviously you've got a source of protein with the nut butter as well. So we're ticking our boxes in terms of macronutrients. We've got our micronutrients in there with our fruit. So we're good to go with that really solid meal. On training days, just add that little bit more carbohydrate in, little tip, but again, and we will touch on that um, later on in the presentation. So a pre and post training snack. Want to make sure you're getting a, a hit of both carbohydrate and protein within this snack, lads. Um, obviously to give ourselves fuel. And when we are exercising or pre-training, we're, we're breaking down our muscles. So it's important we get protein in so that our muscles have something to feed on to try and balance. That's, an, that's another scale we have in nutrition, which is basically muscle protein breakdown and muscle protein synthesis or production. And we wanna, we wanna try and make sure we have that scale balanced. Otherwise we will fade away if, it's, if, it's, if we're not getting enough protein in. Okay, moving on to our lunch option. Again, these are all just options and examples, lads. I have been putting up some stuff and then obviously the resources, as I mentioned, will be made available to you. But same principles. Do macronutrients make up most of the meal? Am I getting an intake of micronutrients with the meal? That little tip there, again, we'll, we'll allude to it more later on in the presentation. A snack, a handful of nuts, um, berries, nut butter on, on slices of apple is, is one I've been um, gotten into the last while. It's actually really nice. And again, you're getting a source of protein, fat, and, and carbohydrates in there. Okay. Moving on to dinner time. Again, just an option. Um, I put a, a good recipe for the L sweet potato wedges up and made that available to you guys. So give it a try if you haven't already. Oven baked salmon or smoked salmon, whatever way you like it. But as I said, it's really important for that function of the brain, function of the heart, where, where, that we get them omega trees in that we can't produce in the body. So whatever fish you may like, salmon, mackerel, and um, in particular, our oily fishes, which are going to tick that omega-3 box. So a pre-bed snack. 
Um, I suppose it's fairly self-explanatory that, well, I don't know about you, but certainly when I'm asleep, I'm not eating. So it's important to get um, a good hit of protein in before we go to bed. But why is that? So, so when we're asleep, I, I touched on there, balancing the scale of muscle protein synthesis or production and breakdown. When we're asleep, our body's in a state of muscle, pro, prolonged state of muscle protein breakdown. So we can try and negate the effect of that, balance that scale if, if we get a good source of protein in before bed, just so um, our bodies can go into, um, we can help them with that muscle protein synthesis, okay? Hydration, absolutely crucial, lads, particularly with the glorious weather we are having out there now. So, so much um, benefits and functions to, to being hydrated um, from a performance and health point of view. Like 70% of our bodies is water. I'm not going to, I'm not going to um, rattle all them off. Presentation will be made available to you, but I, I can't emphasize enough how important this is. How much should we be drinking? Aim for around four liters a day, okay? Um, obviously, that's going to change when we, when we train. We're, we're going to need to increase our water intake. I'm not suggesting you go and weigh yourself before and after you train. Something we do, I suppose, when we get to a really elite level of competition um, with the rugby team, but I won't worry about that for now, but just be aware of it. Like, if I'm out for an hour and a half, there's a good chance I could lose up to about three kilos of water weight. So as a general rule of thumb, we want to uh, rehydrate ourselves with one and a half liters for every kilo I lost. So just think after you do a heavy workout, okay, I need to get the fluids back on board, two and a half to three liters. That should be your goal for the next a um, few hours after you train. Second portion of the presentation, we're going to get a lit, little bit more into the nitty gritty of performance nutrition. I suppose when we think of performance nutrition, what springs to mind for me is the two aspects of it. So obviously I want to um, have optimal nutrition so I can perform at the highest level and then I want to recover properly, adequately, so I'm ready to go again, all right? What should we consider when we think of carbohydrates and performance nutrition? As I said, so they'll be used as fuel. <clears throat> so they're really important that we get them in. Pre-exercise, you're looking for about two to four grams of carbs per kilo body weight. Again, don't, don't go stuffing your face before you're about to um, embark on, on, a, on a heavy session. So around, give yourself a good window around, around four hours before, I suppose would be, be your last meal. Post-exercise, one of the three hours, we're talking refuel, okay? So we need to get them carbs back on board and we'll allude to them three hours of recovery um, in a few slides. So what are the requirements? Again, 50%, I suppose, is, is a general guideline in them RDA amounts. You want to be thinking, all right, how much exercise am I doing today? The intensity of it. I doubt many of you are going to be training for more than four to five hours a day. We're talking like that's Ironman, Ironman stuff there. But if you are training um, twice a day, which, which is not uncommon for a lot of you, as I know you may be doing a lifting session and a conditioning session throughout the lockdown period. So you are going to need to carefully consider um, how much carbohydrates you're taking in. If you don't, you're going to perceive the session to be harder. Why? Because you're not going to have enough energy um, to perform um, at your best. So it is important that you do consider your carbohydrates on days when you are training. A lot of you have probably heard of this. I know certainly anyone I've worked with over the last year or two um, we'll be well familiar with the idea of carbohydrate loading. There's no real need to say if I'm going for a 20 minute jog or I'm taking part in a five or a 10K race. Don't really need to carb, um, carb load for that just because of the duration of the exercise. It's not long enough to warrant carbohydrate loading. However, if I am playing a match, doing a marathon, 
half marathon, whatever it is, I'm, I'm going to need to load up um, on my carbohydrates uh, prior to my performance if, if I want to compete and perform at the best level. So 36 to 48 hours, sufficient enough time to carb load and around 7 to 10 grams per kilo of body weight. That's, that's what we're aiming for. If we look at our protein considerations in terms of performance, as I said, the recommended for the average person is 0.8 grams per kilo of body weight. Not enough for us, lads, all right? We want to be aiming to fall in, in, the, in the window of around 1.4 to 2.2 grams per kilo of body weight. Exact same with our hierarchy of nutritional needs. We've got our hierarchy um, in terms of protein. So firstly, the most important is making sure you're getting enough in across the whole day. So that making sure you're falling within that 1.4 to 2.2 bracket. If you're not getting enough, you can forget about progressing on through, through the pyramid. Protein distribution. This is really important, lads. Um, next level of the pyramid. So we want to be getting an even intake of protein throughout the day. Why do we want to be doing this? Well, it's, it's shown, scientifically proven, that if we get an even spread of our protein intake throughout the day, it's optimal for muscle protein synthesis. So again, what is muscle protein synthesis? Building new muscle. Obviously, we want to ensure that's optimal because that's what we're all trying to do as young, growing men, growing athletes. From a performance point of view, we want to put on that little bit of muscle. So make sure, just be aware that you're not, say the first half of your day is all carbs and the second half is protein. No, you gotta make sure that, that you're getting at least 30 grams um, at each meal, okay? Moving on to quality. So again, this is getting slightly sciencey, but um, I'm, I'm just gonna make you guys aware of it. Don't really need to know, but just so you're aware. Okay, so quality sources of, of protein. Animal proteins, why might they be quality? Y'all might have heard, if some of you are doing science in that for the leaving, amino acids, they're basically the building blocks of protein. Um, and think of amino acids as a light switch for protein synthesis. Animal sources of protein, they contain all the essential amino acids. What that does, switches on that light switch for muscle protein synthesis. Okay, so really important that we're getting quality sources of protein in. If there is any um, vegetarians or vegan um, in the audience, just be aware that um, plant proteins may not contain all of the um, essential amino acids, but you can, um, in, in the same way, by mixing them up, you can absolutely tick off all the boxes for the essential amino acids by just using a variety of sources. So don't rely on the one source. And that, and that goes for, um, for animal protein as well. Make sure you're getting a good variety in. Timing is the next level of our pyramid. So eating around training is really important. Again, that's because when we are training, that scales between muscle protein breakdown and muscle protein synthesis is gonna be tipped slightly to favor muscle protein breakdown if we don't um, time our protein intake around training. So we need to make sure either before or after training that we're getting in that, that, um, that source of protein. Again, as we mentioned, that protein snack before bed really important to give the muscles something to feed on during the night. Fat considerations. So again, we've already mentioned this, but try to limit the processed fats, but I can't emphasize enough how important it is to get fats, good sources of fat into the, into the diet. So and they're, they're really important for the brain function, function cardiovascular and hormone function as well hormone function and hormone production, which is really important in terms of gaining muscle mass as well. That's the three hours of recovery. So we've touched on these, but go, going into a little bit of further detail. Performance nutrition, what do we say the two aspects were? We, we want to ensure we're in an optimal state to perform at our best and that we can recover. So we're ready to go at our best again. Refuel. So we got to go to the petrol station, fill up, ready to go again all right go to the kitchen get the food in okay feed feed those muscles 
the glycogen um, that has just been emptied from them, all the carbs that you've just used during your exercise and training, you've got to fill them back up, replenish it. Okay, repair, have to provide the body with a good source of protein. Muscles have been broken down. They're worn out from the training. It's important that we give them food to, to start the process of muscle protein synthesis and repairing and building them muscles. Rehydrate, one and a half liters per kilo of body weight, all right? Got to get them fluids back on board, lads. You're going to find yourself sweating even more with the, with the weather that we're lucky enough to have at the minute. So really important. Um, and especially with exams and that going on, if you're dehydrated, um, you'll find your focus is just gone out the window. Like sports, team sports like rugby or soccer or, or ga or hurling, where decision-making is paramount, if you're dehydrated, it's going to have a really bad effect on your performance. But I suppose the biggest rock out of all of these, what does the S stand for? Three O's, obviously, they all start with or S, sleep. Okay, if we're not getting that eight hours every night, lads, you can forget about everything else. Um, if we if we're not getting that eight hours, muscle protein synthesis is impaired. So basically, you're not recovering optimally, and your muscles are going to take longer to recover. And it's just not it's not a good time. Obviously, you want to give yourself best opportunity to recover optimally, so you're ready to go again. All right, so make sure you're getting into the routine of getting eight hours sleep every night. Another thing that I suppose some of you may be experiencing during exam time as well is stress. If we're not getting that eight hours of sleep a night, your stress hormone is, is going to skyrocket up as well. So I can't emphasize enough how important it is to get that sleep in. So phases of recovery nutrition. Now, this isn't religious, lads, but it, it is good to get into a good habit and it's, gonna, it's not going to enhance our recovery, but it's going to help us to, re, to recover. Um, I suppose we're always trying to do the best in what we can do and maintain a high standard. So sticking to these phases is just going to help you recover more optimally and it's routine. Um, what's so important with nutrition, training, schoolwork and sports, I think a lot of us have, have realized that now, given the times we're in, we all crave a bit of routine. As I said, don't be religious to this, run into the fridge, oh shit, I've missed a half an hour window. All right, relax, but try try, try and tick off that phase one recovery, um, recovery in. And think about your three hours. Refuel, rehydrate, repair. So I, I love, uh, say, a post post-training smoothie or something like that. I'm getting fluids in, micronutrients in, obviously, if I'm throwing fruit in there, um, recovering, um, or sorry, refueling with the carbohydrates and repairing with sources of protein, whether that be from a yogurt, nut butter, or even some protein um, powder in there. A phase two, as we alluded to, so that might be your lunch, say if you've done a, a, a session in the morning, and you want to get that in within two hours after your training. It needs to be a good, substantial meal. What do we think about macronutrients, micronutrients? Are we getting it in at the right time? So try and hit that phase two recovery window. Okay. Haven't touched on this, and I didn't include it in, in, the, original, in the original slide with the hierarchy of needs, but I knew it is a question that a lot of you are going to have um, in your heads. So there is another level to the nutrition hierarchy of needs. Obviously, they're in order of importance, lads. And as you can see, supplements are at the very top. So not that they don't have benefit, but in terms of their overall performance, like they're really, um, when, when we, uh, I suppose, pair them off with our total energy intake, macronutrients, micros, they're, like, they're really insignificant um, in, terms of, in terms of the bigger picture. Not to say that some of them can't have um, beneficial effects. So what is a supplement? Basically, a product you, you take orally, and the, the intention is to supplement with nutrients, um, supplement their diets with nutrients. Advantages. Obviously, they're really easy to consume. It's really quick, straight after a session. Throw a bit of protein into a shake. 
and and straight down straight down the hatchet. Low perishability, so they'll, they'll last for ages. And some, yes, may improve in, in, in performance. Caffeine, creatine are, are two supplements that are proven um, to improve performance. Believe it or not, protein does not improve performance. Um, although it does, <clears throat> as with all pr protein from your diet, it's going it's to help and that muscle initiate that muscle protein synthesis, particularly something like whey protein. It's a really um, fast acting protein, so it, it is handy, but certainly nowhere near essential um, to be getting them, lads. And why um, is, is because some of these disadvantages that they have. So they overlook strategies that are proven, proven scientifically to improve performance, such as proper nutrition, taking off our three hours of recovery, getting the eight hours sleep in. Drain financial resources, like they're so expensive, lads. So un unless we're really at that elite level or really struggle to, to get our daily protein intake in, which obviously is, is the, the baseline for our, um, for our protein hierarchy of needs and importance, but unless you're really struggling, you just say, save the money. Um, and then again, don't fall into the trap of, of the advertising and marketing they use. So they own, a lot of them only want your money, whether, whether you like it or not. That is, that's in black and white. Um, that's it. They want, they want your money. So they're happy if their sales are going up and they're making a profit. So you just need to be aware of this. If you do have a tub of protein or whatever it is at home, this is what you need to look out for. As I said, a lot of them are out there just looking for the money. So, so you need to make sure that it's ev evidence-based. Um, again, practice good nutrition. So all of these symbols they will mean that the product that you may have, whether it be whey protein, whatever it is, has been tested um, by a third-party lab. And it's, it's really important that you guys are just aware of, them, aware of that because, well, as far as I'm concerned, anything that isn't, um, tested it in one of these credible and reputable labs God knows what could be in the thing don't believe everything you read and certainly don't take it as gospel food diary so with everything good habits is, is crucial and, and um, building up that bit of a, a routine it's, I suppose it's going to highlight if you are eating enough and it may surprise you that you're eating nowhere near enough on the other hand you may be a bit surprised that you're eating way too much. Do macronutrients make up the majority of your meals? Are you getting enough micronutrients in? I think writing your food down, um, a lot of you will be a bit startled that you're not getting ma enough micronutrients in. I could be wrong, but I know I was certainly not the best for it at your age. So I imagine a lot of us need to improve in that area. And then is our meal timing optimal? Again, that's back to our pyramid, the bottom. Total energy intake, next level macros, next level micros, next level is timing. So you can you can just write this down, lads, on a diary or a book or whatever it is. Um, an alternative would be my fitness pal. It's a free app, really handy. Um and yeah, it's just it's just an alternative to a diary, but there's absolutely nothing wrong with with pen and paper. So take home messages. Probably sick of hearing about this pyramid for now, but total energy intake, that's paramount, okay? Use our, our equation for our basal, basal metabolic rate, and then if we're looking to put on a bit of size, um, we want to be in that surplus. So tipping the scales in favor, so we're, we're taking in more energy than, than we're using. Macronutrients, carbohydrates, protein, and fat. Are we getting enough? And then I suppose within that, we've got our protein pyramid of importance. Are we getting enough protein in? Protein distribution, the quality of it and the timing of it. Micronutrients, so important for physiological function. And then the timing of our meals around training and throughout the day in general. So every time you think of performance nutrition, this is what I want you to start thinking about. Have I given my body enough fuel for the activity that I'm about to undertake or start doing? And am I giving myself the best possible chance to recover 
optimally and return to a state of performance readiness. So again, that's that's what you should be thinking. As soon as soon as you're done your match or whatever, straight away thinking, okay, I need to get ready to perform again. Because often for a lot of us, we're training three, four times a week, match on a Saturday, we need to be ready to go again on Monday. So it's so important. They're the two aspects we're looking at. Am I prepared? Do I have enough fuel? Um, and am I giving myself the best opportunity to recover optimally? Again, this is would be another take-home message. Is that food diary? Just good habits, lads. Enjoy, enjoy your food, and writing writing something down again. It might um it might just open the eyes a little bit. Really important that that we enjoy the food as well, and hopefully these resources will help you do that. So the HSE website is has is got great recipes on it. Um, even recipes for family uh, meals and ideas and stuff like that. Evidence-based practice. Uh, Daniel Davy, I know a lot of you probably have heard of him, and, and I certainly, um, I can put the link in, it's about two weeks ago now to the senior guys of his website. So the book is available, I think it's only about 15 quid, but um, uh, alternatively, the, the website has more than enough recipes, so you don't need to go out buying it. it um, you don't want it because there's a lot of recipes and ideas for breakfast lunch dinner sweet snacks savory snacks and it even goes into a little bit more detail on the science behind performance nutrition so um some really good information on that website and in that book the happy pair and um, i'm sure most of you have heard of them as well two two uh, brothers um and it's actually there's another brother behind who's the brains behind all the marketing and that's how the two two others get all the limelight, but there is one behind in the background that does that does the handiwork. But they have like that, um they do have books out there, but like Daniel Davy and that they have great recipes on the website. So there's no need to go out um, and drain in the resources, as we say, but um great recipes on these websites. Which will all will make the um, presentation available to you, lads. So you'll be able to follow the links um, and, and 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 use some of the ideas on, on them pages. That, that's it for um, for today, men. Um, we basically we just wanted to give a background into the nutrition and the performance side of things. How we can recover optimally. How we can ensure we're ready to perform at the highest level. And again, as we progress through the year, we will be going through more detail. Even over the summer, we'll, we'll have more recipes or more uh, presentations, sorry, that will focus on specific topics within nutrition. I'm sure, um, like, we could be here, we could probably be here talking until Friday if we wanted to about nutrition. Obviously, I'm not going to do that. Keep it short and snappy. Um, so I hope that you, that you got something out of that and we'll now open that to any questions um, if there is any I think I got a few questions in before that hopefully I answered um, but if not lads um, fire them into the chat now and I will answer them to the best of my ability and again if nobody wants to shout up now or whatever know where I am so I'm, I'm free to be contacted and, and happy to help where I can all good damn what would be healthy way to gain over this time well, hi Dan first of all um, with everything just be sensible so it's with the time we're in now it's a slow burner i suppose so like if if we're looking at about say half a kilo maybe over over a two week period and obviously that's something that keep can't keep going up um because dan for yourself as a back you keep even for the forwards if you keep putting on weight obviously it's not sustainable and it's not not very optimal for our performance if our body composition which is basically uh, percentages of bone, muscle, fat, tissue, and water that our bodies are made up of. So if, if, if we're putting on too much weight and that fat goes up, then our performance is going to be negatively impacted. So I'd say, Dan, aim for about a half a kilo every two weeks. 
see how that goes for you. If if you find yourself not going up at all, um, then you might need to look at adjusting your calories. And and it, if uh, that does happen, you can contact me or whatever, as all of you can, lads, and that resource is there for you. Perfect. Cheers, Stu. Any other? Um... No, Serge, no, none of us should be trying to, the question there, sorry, I don't know if you can see them in the chat, lads. Should we be trying to maintain playing weight now or can we uh, can we drop a bit? I would say maintain or try to put on, the mu try to put on that little bit of muscle, which is going to be hard, lads, I know, because a lot of us don't have... Um, access to sufficient loads in terms of bars and dumbbells and etc to try and um, get get them adaptations from our training but definitely um not being trying to uh, lose the weight should try to be maintained and if possible even put on a little bit of muscle and i think as we said we are going to try and follow up with these presentations probably one every two weeks so um, gaining lean muscle mass, that's probably going to be a whole dedicated um, presentation to that where we will get down into the, into the nitty gritty of it. But that, like, that's more than enough information for you guys for now. And it's big rocks. So everything that's in that presentation, which will be made available to you guys, that's our big rocks. So you, you have heard me use that analogy before. Fill, fill the glass with the big rocks and then we start filling with the sand. Okay, so all, all the other presentations that are going to follow on from this, that'll be the sand where we're, we're just filling in them little intricate details, filling in the gaps. But make sure them big rocks, which is everything that we've just covered off, make sure, make sure they're in place first. Happy out. If there is any other questions, lads, and, and you're not comfortable um, typing them in now, as I said, you, you can reach out to me in your own time on an individual basis, and I, I'd be more than happy to help. I think we're good, Val, are we? Yeah, sound. Lads, again, like I said at the start, heaps of really, really good information. So, Connor, just want to thank you for putting that together. I know that thank there you. was uh, some, yeah, I know there's some amount of uh, planning and thought that went into it, mate, and I know that it's your passion. You can clearly see that when it comes through. So, lads, do soak up the resource that we have in Connor. We're really blessed to have um, not only, uh, you know, a skillful and talented uh, trainer, but also someone who believes uh, passionately in the school and in you guys as young men and, and developing you guys. So, thanks a heap for that, Winnie. As you can see, I was stretching while listening. Uh, <laughs> getting ready for primers for, for this afternoon session, lads. So, yep. Uh, Carry on, boys. We will get back to you. Now, um, we're going to release the, the, pl the plan, the calendar plan, but essentially uh, Phil's wanting to give you guys uh, the month off uh, from hearing from us lads, which is, which is grand. But uh, in lieu of that, uh, Winnie or myself will communicate the, the sort of the outline plans or give you options for working out in terms of uh, running blocks and, and workouts um, for the month of June. And we'll send them out at the start of the week. And then... Come July, lads, we'll start getting into a bit more work um, and a few more workshops and bits and pieces, but no, nothing strenuous. But it's just to give you guys something to aim for and some structure within your day through the summer. Because, lads, if you think that the last 11 weeks has dragged on, <laughs> wait till we get into summer and there's less of the schoolwork and uh, you know, we've, got, we've got all that time to ourselves. So, um, yeah, hopefully we can provide you with some structure and some activity, some things to do. Sound. All right, yeah. lads. Best of luck with the rest of the exams if you have any left. Yeah. No, cheers your time, boys. Appreciate it. Well done, Connor. Cheers, Winnie. Thanks, Thanks you. Cheers, Winnie. See you later. Thanks, Winnie. Cheers, Winnie. Nice. Thanks. 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 Thanks.